All right, welcome back everyone. You're watching Foreman's Basement. My name is Frank. Hope you're all doing well. I myself am very unwell. But today we're talking about guitar slides. Now I play almost exclusively slide guitar. I've amassed somewhat of a collection of, you know, ceramic, glass, sometimes I just break a beer bottle. Uh, this is one of those like socket wrench things. Uh, and then we have like, you know, the commercially available slides. So I just want to run through them, talk about it a little bit. And as a bonus, at the very end of the video, we're going to look at some everyday items that you might not think of for slide, but they could come in handy in a pinch, or it's also just a cool party trick to be able to play slide with a variety of, of household items. So without further ado, I'm here today with my brand new, well, I guess not entirely brand new now, but my new Donner Les Paul that I'm so proud of. <laughs> and my also new trusty Marshall toy amp, mini, mini toy stack. We'll get some better equipment, you know, soon here, guys, but it's a hard knock life, as they say. Now, when it comes to slide, this video was inspired by a channel that I really should have remembered the name, but it was something resonators. Uh, and the guy was wearing like a, a gray uh, sweater and he had a bunch of guitars behind him and he was talking about slides and I saw his video yesterday while I was scrolling through my feed and I thought that's actually a really good idea for a video I want to make my own video talking about guitar slides like because every you know the difference between you know let's say something like this like brass and even stainless steel there's already a difference between two types of metal but then you go to like a Dunlop, you know, like a medicine bottle, which by the way, medicine bottle is my favorite style of slide. I have too many of them. And I'm going to talk about that later. Big fan of Dwayne Allman. And apparently Alan Wilson used the medicine, uh, medicine bottle style slides as well. I didn't know this until recently. I read it in the Alan Wilson book, Blind Owl Blues, which I do recommend you read if you get a chance. And there was someone else that really shocked me that they played with Corsidan bottles. Oh, uh, Rory Gallagher. I was watching an interview, uh, like an interview he did in the 70s. I don't, I forget what, what it was for, but it was, he was talking about his equipment and he says every time he goes to the States, he'll go and get like one of the old school style Corsidan bottles. And it just goes to show, I mean, the, the history of the medicine bottle slide is a little bit iffy. Like it's a little misleading if you read descriptions on packages. Like, for example, I have this one for the Corisidian, which again, I have a million different kinds of medicine bottles and they each have their own name. Uh, and I recognize this one because of the swirled bottom. But the packaging for this one says something very outlandish, like the original Delta Blues players used medicine bottles. It's like, no, I don't think that, they, I mean, they might have, they, they certainly might have, but I've never heard of any traditional blues player using slides up until the 60s when it was like Dwayne Allman and again Alan Wilson and you had Rory Gallagher who came a little bit later in the 70s but uh anyway we'll talk more medicine bottle later but for now back to what I was saying I saw this video and he starts off the video right where I think I'm gonna start it off hopefully we don't rip this guy off too much is this the standard one yeah okay this is a standard Dunlop medicine bottle this is uh, very average of what you'll find if you're looking for a medicine bottle. This is probably the one you'll find in stores. They have them in varying, uh, they have different sizes for the rings. So they have a small one, medium, and a large. I've had the small and medium, never had the large. I never needed it because my, my fingers aren't really that big. And this is the medium here and it fits just about fine. I mean, I don't, I prefer to, the heavy wall thickness. This is just the regular wall thickness, but so you'll either find something like that or this. And this is probably your best bet right here. If you want the sure, the sure deal when you go out and get a slide, get either the stainless steel. These are both Dunlops. I'm almost positive. I'm not sure now that I say it out loud, but I'm almost certain that these are produced by Dunlop. You've got the stainless steel and the brass. The brass does get uh, dirty pretty fast. It also turns your finger green if you play it for too long. So keep that, definitely keep that in mind. I remember one time... When I was first getting into slide, I was playing for like two hours one day. I didn't, I didn't take the slide off for anything. I just had it on my finger, you know, even while I got up to pee or have a beer or whatever. Then I took it off at the end of that session and my entire finger was green because it's made out of brass, of course. So 
Uh, my recommendation would probably be the stainless steel as your very first because it's reliable. It also doesn't break. I can't tell you how many medicine bottles I've broken just from dropping them. Or, I mean, all the time I go out to the jam and it's a hard lesson that I keep learning over and over. This is a small Dunlop here. I really hope this video doesn't go out of focus. That's making me very paranoid right now, the focus of the video. Uh, this small Dunlop is actually really nice. It fits my pinky perfectly. It's also got a tight fit so you can kind of wiggle around. This is nice if you want to do, like, I play in major E, or, uh, major E, open E tuning. So if, let's say that I wanted to do a minor chord, I need three fingers to do that. So in that case, I would put the slide here. Now, that actually felt very nice. You know, I don't normally play with my pinky, but I've been getting into it lately because I'm starting to feel very limited in playing an open E tuning that I can't use the chords that I want to. Although I did recently discover this way to make a minor chord, but it's very difficult because I'm using this finger, which I don't have a lot of dexterity in my left ring finger, and I'm using that to bar these two strings here. It's doable, but it's very difficult. My fingers struggle a lot. Look at that, I can't even... Yeah, it's, it's terrible. There's a reason I play slide, it's because I don't have a lot of dexterity in my fingers. I'm trying to change that though. Anyway, so these are going to be the first two types of slides. I know we're all over the fucking place right now. I would recommend this, but however, that being said, I prefer the tone of glass. It's just, again, you break them. Just the other day I was at the Aztec Brewery and I had my favorite brown glass rock slide. Uh, rock slide is a company that makes slides. It's so one of my favorite slides, it was just a little bit bigger than this, and it was uh, dark amber glass. Dropped it right on the concrete floor in the brewing room. We, we hang out in the brewing room while, while we're waiting for the other acts, or... To be honest, I just hang out there because I'm a little... Sometimes I'm a little socially awkward, I don't necessarily not in a very social mood all the time, especially these last few years. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm hanging out there and boom, I dropped one of my favorite slides, shattered everywhere. And then I felt like a jackass because, you know, I had to go to the owner of the brewery and be like, hey, can I have a broom and a fucking uh, dustpan because I just broke my slide. Let's hit a couple licks on the stainless steel here. We'll choose the key of a... Uh... Here, we'll do a classic Elmore riff. How about that? this morning like I said I I'm still learning how to play again I haven't played in six months so it's, it's been an adventure turn up I'm gonna turn up the tone a little bit see if we can get some of that high end but not out of this fucking piece of shit feels so good to play again. I don't give a fuck that my guitar is a piece of shit, and I don't care that my amp sucks. I'm just happy to have something to play. Now, while we're talking about the stainless steel, um, I just want to mention this. I went out and got this one day at the Home Depot. Dude, I have to make sure this video is in focus. I've done so many takes of videos where things go out of focus. I just want to make sure it wasn't too blurry there. And now I'm paranoid again because I just stepped into the frame. Anyway, I went and got this at the Home Depot. This is a Husky 5.8, 5 out of 8, 5 eighths. I'm not a man's man, all right? Cut me some slack. But it has a sort of a, a ta uh, not a taper, but it, it sort of stops about halfway there. And you want to use the side of a slide that's the smoothest, always. 
This one's really nice. It's hard to control because of how heavy it is compared to something like the classic Dunlop, which is a lot lighter and you can... Anyway, but the tone, the tone is very deep. It's very nice. And as a bonus, I like to use this square here. I like to angle it so that I have a perfect pointer and I know exactly which fret I'm hitting. Because sometimes if you're using a slide like, let's say you're using a rolling rock slide, well, look at the shape of it. It's kind of hard to make sure that you're right directly on the fret. That's why, again, see this point? That's actually a very good thing because it, it gives me a straight line of sight to make sure that I am hitting the right fret. Uh, and, and I do the same thing with this. I use the little tip of the diamond there. You know, it's, it's a real shame that we're using this amp because you're not really going to be able to tell the major differences, but really is a thing of feel. As a general rule of thumb, uh, more than material, I look for weight and hardness to a slide, right? Like something like this, the Dunlop is perfectly fine. We just played this a little bit ago, but it's very light. It's made out of Pyrex. It's actually not, it's not, uh, it's not crystal. It's not like a flint glass, I think that they call it. This is just Pyrex. It's lab made and it's very light. Also breaks fairly easily. Uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Anyway, but sometimes you can find new old stock. Like this is an old school medicine bottle. This is from back in the day. It even has a little, they have numbers on the bottom and, and this uh, lovely, uh, anyway, it's old glass. These are old medicine bottles from back in the day. You can find new old stock and preferably you want something like this is kind of ideal. The Corsetan ones would be ideal, but everyone already knows about them and everyone, I mean, if I had to guess, you probably have to pay about $100 if you want to get a real Corsetan slide. And it's just not worth it because you could just drop the thing and break it, you know? I mean, and I don't think that the difference in tone is that significant. There's guys, there's some people out there that are going to tell you, some people are going to swear up and down that the real crystal glass is way better than the Pyrex. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, yes, the tone is better on real crystal. And by the way, I don't know how, how to tell other than when I look at them both up to the light, this one looks like an acid trip. You know, like if you take a picture of the sunlight going through this, it distorts the image in, in these wonderful ways. I mean, it's almost a work of art. I have a couple of these and each one is unique in the way that the, on the outside, they're pretty uniform, but on the inside, they have sort of a, a waviness to the glass. It's actually very, it's nice. I, this is probably my single favorite medicine bottle here. I got this from a company that, actually I'm not going to say it because uh, it's the only place I've been able to find it and they're very cheap and that's my secret. But if you're desperate enough, go down in the comments, I'll see if I can leave you a link or something. Maybe I can email it to you. It'll be our little secret. Anyway, they, there's a lot of imperfections in the glass. I mean, like I said, it feels a little bit wavy on the inside, but let's just listen to the tone really quick. I'll try to go on a clean setting here. Wow, this thing doesn't get very clean. It gets overdriven so easily. All right, this is Pyrex. This is my favorite Pyrex one. This is a brand called Corisiadan. It's Corsetan, but spelled the wrong way. They come in a, they come in a blister pack with a yellow piece of paper uh, with some not true things about pill bottle slides. Now let's do a different key. Let's do F. I don't think you're going to be able to tell the difference from this amp, but you might. So to me, the player, and again, you might, I'm sorry that I'm using this amp, but to me, the player, the difference is the tone has a little bit more uh, depth to it. I don't know. The, the tone, perhaps more sustain, definitely. A little bit more sustain, I would say, out of the real crystal. But, I mean, these are very small, very small differences. And really, unless you're using high-end equipment, a lot of the times you're not going to notice anyway. So it really comes down to what do you like, right? Because I like playing medicine style, but let me be honest for a second. This is the ideal slide. When it comes to what sounds best, what's most durable, most reliable, 
This fits my finger just about perfect, as you can see. I mean, down to the length and everything, I can still bend. Um, I like to have it sort of around the knuckle. I don't need to do that for those because they're so big, the medicine bottle. But for this one, I like to have it to where I can bend. And this is perfect. To, to me, this is about as good as it gets. It doesn't come off very easily. It's got a snug but not tight fit. Um, the tone is great. It's reliable. It's a little grittier, maybe a little bit uh, shinier, perhaps. Um, oh my god, I'm sweating, dude. I had too much coffee this morning. I can't stop talking. But I had to make a video, guys, because I'm going insane. Every day I just think about my future and I'm going insane, you know? It's really sad. Um, making videos out of desperation, almost. I don't know. I don't know what I'm hoping these videos will accomplish. But ever since I started making videos, once I make one, I do feel a little tiny bit better, so... Plus, I don't oftentimes get to be alone in the house, so I gotta take advantage of that, too. Oh, check it out. I'm learning, um, I finally learned, more or less, the riff from Living Loving Made. I saw one of those fucked up Led Zeppelin documentaries this morning. It was the one, it was one of those YouTube ones where Jimmy Page like sold his soul to the devil or something like that. I love that shit. I mean, it makes me laugh. I don't take it too seriously, but it's just funny. This next slide I'm gonna show you. Yeah, we gotta start moving through these slides a little bit more. This is really cool. Um, I've had this and don't use it often, but the tone is incredible. This is a pork knuckle by Clayton USA. I don't remember where I got this from. I think I got it at Guitar Center. And uh, I got it just because it looked cool. It has sort of a star design uh, on the inside so that your finger, you know, it has kind of a nice grip. It doesn't slip around too much. It's actually pretty nice for a pinky slide, but very heavy. Very, very heavy. <laughs> slides that I can use to hit the fat string up here. Most of the other slides it just goes it just starts like I don't know. Might have to replace this top string with a slightly smaller gauge. But the rest of them are fine. Um, so yeah this is really nice. Again the heavier the slide the better it's going to sound generally speaking. That being said sometimes I like to use a thin slide. Um, oh, you know what? I don't have any of my vintage. I once bought three vintage uh, medicine bottles that they were so old the glass was like yellowed and they were very thin. They were from the 70s. They were about that big. So they were really nice pinky slides. I gave one away to a friend. I broke one and then I still had one running around somewhere, but I haven't seen it in a while now. So that one might be gone. But. Uh... <laughs> stop hitting the same lick over and over again. So once again, as the player, what I'm noticing here from this slide, uh, it's a lot easier to get a thick, fat tone without smacking the string too hard with my finger. A lot of times I'm like, you know, like I'm really, I'm really using the meaty part of my finger to just, you know, really thwack that, that string. And I don't have to do that as much with a heavier slide. The trade-off, of course, being that they're a lot harder to control, you know? Um, let's say that I wanted to do something, you know, so very quick, you know, like a... If I wanted to do 
something like that, and I wouldn't be able to do it with this because it's just... I mean, yeah, you can. You still can, of course. It's just so much harder to control, and it doesn't feel very nice. Now, let's move along because I feel like I'm wasting so much time. Let's talk about a real piece of shit. You know what fucking pisses me off? Rich Robinson, whoever the fuck you are, I paid like $30 for this fucking slide. I'd seen it advertised on the internet before. I was very excited when I saw this at my local music store. I said, oh, it's the Rich Robin, whatever, Rich Ross, Rich Robinson, whatever that guy's name is. It's his signature slide. I must have it. I'm obsessed with slides, right? Well, I bought it and it's a big piece of junk. <laughs> It should have been great, and it almost was, but let me tell you where they messed up with this. And it's still a usable slide, but let me tell you why I don't like it. First, let's talk about the good parts. Number one, it's heavy. It's very heavy. This is thick brass. You can see on one end here, it's got a taper. So right here, it's very thin, and up here, it's a little bit thicker. So you can either use that to stop it from going over the knuckle, or you can have that taper just for comfort in the finger. Uh, I mean, I guess you could use it either way, really. It's made out of brass, so it won't break. That's another great uh, feature. And it has this lovely, rich Robinson uh, little logo with the two R's and a feather. So that's cool. And I was so excited, and I took it home. I don't know if you guys can hear that. There's way, there's so much scrape to this. I mean, it has sort of an airbrushed quality. And again, it's not an unusable slide by any means. It's still perfectly functional. But do you hear that? That's not a nice sound and it's not a nice feeling as a slide player, okay? I like my slides nice and smooth. Sometimes when you put on a fresh pair of strings, yeah, it takes a couple of days to smoothen them out, but I mean, Guys fucking hear that? That's insane. I mean, now, all slides have a little bit of scrape, and you can make any slide scrape if you push it hard enough, but I mean, I just compare this to like my, you know, just a standard Dunlop yellow medicine bottle. I guess that does scrape too, but it doesn't feel as bad. And you can't hear it as much when you play. So again, not at all unusable by any means, but it doesn't feel very nice, and I don't know, I just, when I bought this, I just kind of sat there staring at it like, did Rich Robinson just put his name on this? Is this really the type of slide that he plays? Did he make this choice himself? Um, and again, the weight is lovely. It's just that scrape. I was hitting the logo for a second, but no. I mean, that's just terrible. I'm sorry, I can't... Like I said, all, all of these slides have a little bit of scrape. That's just... You gotta take that for granted. It's a slide. You scrape it across the strings. Uh, let's talk about another one that looked very cool, but I was not very satisfied with. Same exact same problem. This is an old wine bottle uh, neck from uh, Big Heart Slides. Is that the name? Big Heart or Big Mojo Slides? I forget. Uh, lovely look. I saw this at Guitar Center. They were selling it, surprisingly enough. Thick glass. As far as I can tell, it is real crystal. I mean, definitely more so than a Pyrex. And it's a lot better than the Rich Robinson one, I'll tell you that. But it's still, it's just got too much scrape. Way too much scrape for me. Now, I have to say that, you know, if you're on stage, and like I said, if you have a very loud amp, if you're playing through a real Marshall stack, maybe you won't be able to hear the scrape, but it does come out of the speaker a little bit, so I'd be a little concerned about that, but I don't know. Then again, I'm an amateur, so I could just be completely wrong about all of this. That, that's a possibility, too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
That's with no gain, if you can believe that. I'm just trying to get a clean tone out of this thing. You know, just play very lightly. Check out this fucking scale I just learned. I always wanted to do some shit like this. So, I've uh, just got these books. Ugh, God damn it, my fucking back. I'm swearing so much lately, just out of anger. I just got these books about uh, open E tuning, and uh, I've been learning about different scales, um, different arpeggios, um, chords that you can do in open E tuning. And that one right there was called the Spanish Gypsy Scale, which... I don't know who came up with that name. That's just what it was called in the book. He said it, not me. Um, I don't know where that name came from, and it doesn't seem to be very accurate. It sounds a lot more Middle Eastern to me, but again, what do I know? I'm an amateur. Spanish Gypsy Tuning? I don't know about that. Or Spanish Gypsy Scale. I drank too much coffee and I keep drinking more, and I'm not going to feel very good later. Ugh, we're going to have to even it out with some beer. Now that that spoon just fell, let's speed this fucking video up. i got to check the time here. This is stressing me out. Alright, 27... Still definitely too long of a video. Maybe I'll make a short version of this video for the, for the masses. Something that's easily digestible because I wouldn't expect anyone else to sit through with me. <sighs> Damn it, we still have so much to go through. Okay. Let's wrap it up on the uh, medicine bottle. So, this is the classic Dunlop medicine bottle. Standard wall thickness, regular uh, size. <laughs> This one we've already talked about, new old stock, my secret, if you want, if you're a serious player, I don't know, email me, maybe I can get you a, a link. Uh, I just don't want to tell everyone because I want to buy a few more and, and hoard them before I release that information. This is the Dunlop heavy, or a, uh, is this heavy or medium wall thickness? I think this might be medium, but this particular one has a very thick bottom, which I really like. It's about third third of an inch of just pure glass at the very top of this. It gives it a nice weighted end. Um, each, each one of these that you buy is going to be slightly different, just slightly, and even more so if you buy real crystal. So keep that in mind. I like to weigh them in grams. This is my Derek truck slide. I had some um, marijuana concentrate in here for a while and I never cleaned it out, so I have to clean this one. But this is the Derek truck signature slide. Um, got from a friend of mine because he knows that I collect slides except that friend ended up being a huge piece of shit in the end this is a this is an interesting one this is one you don't see too often I actually went and got a spare one of these because I liked it so much this is another medicine bottle but this one I'm trying to think what brand uh, oh it's Didario I think I think it's Didario and it comes in a little tube and again very fat very fat piece of glass on the top there that I really like. It just looks cool. It adds weight. Um, so again, a lot of brands make these medicine bottles, and they're all, you know, slightly different. They all have a slightly different lip, slightly different dimensions, but they're all medicine bottles. Again, I like to go for the ones with the fat bottom. This, this one's got a small bottom. I don't really like that one that much. Um... This one's also got a pretty nice fat bottom. These are three of my best slides right here. We didn't play this one, actually. Let's play the Didario. And the reason I didn't play it is because it's made out of Pyrex, so it's not really going to sound any different from any of these other Dunlops.
Sleepwalk. That was one of the first, actually that was probably the first uh, slide song that I learned. I, I learned the uh, slide part from Martin Guitar's videos. And I just learned the, the slide part and the rest of it actually managed to fill in myself. Over I just kept playing that one song over and over again. And it got to the point where I made up my own solo at the end of that song. If you ever see me play that on video or like out, you know, out at a brewery or whatever, at the end, I do a little solo that it's, it's kind of like... <laughs> that was fucking awful, I'm sorry. I haven't played that solo in, again, six months, so... How did that go? It was like... Anyway, but uh, yeah, that was kind of my introduction into slide. Let's keep moving, we're running out of time, and I really wanted to talk about my Rolling Rock slides, okay? I really wanted to talk about my Rolling Rock slides. I'm very proud of them. I made them myself, in case you can't tell. Um, these are great, guys. You guys, want a, you guys want a historically accurate slide? Go get yourself a 12-pack of Rolling Rock. It's dirt cheap, even here in California. You can get a 12-pack for like seven bucks. Get the ones in the glass bottle. They have the perfect neck for a slide. I love these. Um, when I make them for friends, I do just sand them down and cut them uh, properly. Like a, I use a different method when I make them for friends, but when I make them for myself, I just smash them. I just smash them with a hammer. Sometimes I'll uh, smooth out the rough edges, but usually not. <laughs> And uh, this this is really fun if you're if you're at the bar. Well, until the bartender makes a big deal out of it. Uh, but this is very fun if you're out and about just to show people what the slide can do. I love to play with something like this where somebody looks at it and goes, he's got a piece of trash on his finger and he's playing with it. You know. <laughs> slides guys they're fun to make I love to drink rolling rock it's cheap do yourself a favor if you're into that type of thing these are very fun the there's just something about the, the glass for the rolling rock they are it's definitely some kind of recycled glass I would imagine but it's real I mean it has the same effect of when you look through it it sort of distorts the image that's how I recognize real glass in, in comparison to the Pyrex and again, I could be wrong about that. These are so much fun. The only problem with these is if you don't cut them perfectly, you've got these little sharp chunks, and what you don't want is that hitting your string. That's bad. You don't want those sharp edges hitting your strings, hitting your fretboard. So, you know, you try to make sure you have the right length and hit it on the right side. Also, it goes without saying, fellas, but you never play on the seam of the bottle, ever. That'll give you the worst scrape of your life. Sometimes I'll be playing these medicine bottles and I'll, or you know, these ones, and I'll get this terrible scrape and I'll look, and sure as shit, I'm playing it right on the seam. So, that's something to keep in mind. Okay, and for our grand finale, I think that covers it, that does all of it. Well, I guess I'll show this one. This is the first wine bottle that I ever got, and I still have it, and it's very thick, and it's actually one of my favorites, so I'll show this one last, and then we'll move on to household items. What shall we play here? Bell has tone. My 
My baby, she caught that train and gone. Bell has told me. Baby, caught that train and gone. I don't know what to play. I never know what to play. Great slide. And now, for our bonus segment, household items, okay? What are we gonna do with them? We're gonna play slide with them. It's a little harder, and you can tell the tone is not as nice. There we go. your spoon there let's uh, let's try a harmonica play slide with a harmonica you just find a flat sort of round part which is right here uh, near, near the mouthpiece and you just kind of hold it like this and with a little bit of luck talk about a bad scrape Okay, there's the harmonica. What else do we got here? I think that's actually it. Oh, yeah, okay. A lighter, a big lighter, you know, regular fire, fuego, right? I'm just gonna place it between my fingers. Gotta make sure you're making contact with it, of course. Okay, this one's a little bit harder, not gonna lie. Probably should have tested these out ahead of time. The plastic doesn't sound that bad. It, it really should sound terrible, but it's not. It's not terrible. It's not great either. Okay, one more for party tricks. We have the mini uh, mini bottle of Corona. These are little seven ounce bottles of uh, Corona. And uh, again, this is really nice if you're out and about, you wanna sort of do a little party trick uh, for your friends. You wanna line it up where there is no label here and just find, you know, a clean spot. And it's a lot harder to control because of the size. So, you know, that's the, anything wrapped around your finger basically just acts as your finger. You know, it's just like having a robot finger, but you move up to different things like the spoon or the lighter and uh, the, the bottle. It's a little bit harder to control. Well, that sounded hardcore, the spoon and the lighter. <laughs> Okay, guys, if you have any questions, leave question, uh, questions, leave them down below. I think that's all I got. And I'm going to leave you with one last tip. If you ever play with a glass bottle with liquid inside, a full glass will sustain a lot more than an empty one. So keep that in mind. If I were to have filled this up all the way with water or beer, played it and plugged it into a nice amp, you'd get a really nice sustain out of that. Thank you all for joining. I'm going to be trying to upload more as I can coming up here. So this has been Foreman's Basement, another episode that's been too long, and I'll see you all next time.